As the first anniversary of the Dublin riots approaches, Garthia are implementing a new strategy to bring those responsible to justice. And this latest approach is publishing pictures of the rioters in action. Joining me now, Pat Murray, a former detective inspector and senior investigations officer and author, who's going to talk to us about the change in tactics and what it might mean for this investigation and for uh, future investigations. Pat, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Pat. Good morning. Is this the first time they've done this? Well, if you look at it, it's it's a good strategy and there's nothing unusual about it. And the, the senior investigating officers, uh, one of his tools in his toolbox is to try and get people identified by putting uh, their pictures up on either the Garda website or maybe newspapers or uh, the Garda Crime Call programme. Yeah. And, and it is nothing new because if you look at any crime call programme, they're always looking for to identify people who are robbing shops or doing whatever. Uh, it's nothing new. The uh, Crime Watch UK have often put up uh, dozens of pictures of people they wish to identify who were involved in yeah. in disturbances and that. So it, 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 it is nothing new. But what I would say, and when the guards are saying they're putting up uh, pictures of suspects, so to, for someone to be a suspect, the, the, the senior investigating officer must have reasonable cause to suspect uh, or cause to believe that that person Another one, is if in a, someone, in a criminal. If someone is, yeah, if someone uh, is observed in this picture carrying a, tele, a television set out of a shop, for example, that's on fire. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's hand in stolen property. He's, he's probably robbing or whatever. And it's reasonable for the guard to believe that. And if they can get him identified, well and good. Now, I can tell you, and I can tell you from experience, that uh, identifications or recognitions of people or suspects who end up in court will always be challenged by uh, um, defence barristers. And uh, it, it, when the guards are making their investigations and making their moves, and that, it has to be shown that they're doing it in a fair and reasonable manner. And it is very reasonable for them to put up pictures of persons that they believe were involved in criminal activity uh, on that on, on, on that evening. And I can see no problem with it whatsoever. But the guard also has to be wary if someone is identified as that person got a twin brother or, you know, it, it, yeah. it, it, it could it be someone else. So, you know, it, it is, it, you know, it's not just a straightforward, but any reasonable thinking uh, investigator will have all those uh, avenues covered, but to put to, to publish the photographs, I can see no problem with it whatsoever to get people identified. Yeah. Now I've uh, uh, been told that there are ninety-eight pictures up on the Garda website now, so yeah, they're yeah. already they're already available for people to check out. Um, in reporting, yeah. you know, I think that's Joe or John or Mick or whatever. Um, yeah. I presume people can do that anonymously. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, and I'm sure a lot of it will be anonymous. Uh, some they'll ring up the guard uh, helpline around and say, "Yeah, I looked at those and photograph number five is Joe Bloggs. He lives down the road, and that's it. I'm not telling any more. I'm not making a statement. That's it. Like I'm just helping out in the story. So the guard, the senior vice, has to uh, evaluate: is that reasonable to believe that this is Joe Bloggs? Well, what they'll have to do is they'll have to get uh, proper photographs of Joe Bloggs. Has he got a Facebook account? Is he? Is the, the do the pictures match? Is it reasonable to believe that yeah, this is the person? Can the guard then make an arrest and detain based on that? And that's the decision the senior investigating yeah. officer will have to make. Uh, uh, I would say I don't know. I'm not saying that I know everything, but what I would do is that I would try to identify. The person in the in in the footage, with other aspects, uh, maybe put surveillance on them, get them photographed, and see if the photographs match. Yeah. And if they do, you have a reasonable suspicion that is that person, and then you can make that arrest and you can question them. Hmm. Uh, now, the, the difficulty it, it, in getting a conviction, you know, you have the CCTV hmm. footage, and it's not one of uh, quote unquote the usual suspects because the guard they would tend to know. No, no, no a lot of people, and they would have identified themselves from within their own ranks who Joe or Mick yeah, or John yeah. is. So this, yeah, well, these are clearly that's, people that's, that they don't know. Yes, or there may be people who are who are engaged in uh, the activities that night who are from down the country and who came up knowing that there was going to be a bit of a kickoff 
and the local guards down the country may know them, but the local guards in Store Street or if it's Given Street or Mount Street mightn't know them. So, like, uh, there is that element as well. So I think, uh, you know, uh, people will be identified and qu- probably quite a number of them will be identified, you know. Now, and, uh, facial uh, recognition, and we hear from, I think, one of the uh, manifestos, Fine Gael manifesto, is suggesting more widespread use of facial recognition to help the Gardaí combat yeah, crime. Right. Would that kind of technology mm-hmm. speed things up? Because at the moment oh, it seems wow. that the Gardaí are trawling through CCTV footage from a year ago and it's a very yeah. tedious and slow process. It is a tedious and slow process, and I know all about it with the uh, Adrian Donahue murder. We had 40 years of viewing, uh, which I had to get through in, 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 in a short space of time, but I had personnel to watch it. It is very tedious, and it's frame by frame, and that's what has to be done. Facial recognition is all grand and dandy, and it sounds great that I can take a photograph of this fellow who's trying to burn a car or something and throw it in there and it'll throw him up like, you know. Uh, it's not that easy and it's not that simple. But it's, it's far easier than yeah. trawling through 40 years of footage. Oh, it is, yeah, but it may throw up uh, a number of suspects. Uh, it's not it's not that clear cut, this facial recognition. And I'd be very wary of it in ways uh, it, like it will be another tool in the toolbox of the investigator, but it depends on how it's used. And uh, like all of this stuff would be at a trial would be uh, pulled apart by a defence, like you know. Yeah. So, but isn't that the isn't that, that the case that our uh, system is such with free legal legal aid and so on that no one will be uh, set up without the help of a barrister to defend them. You know, if, absolutely, absolutely, and I can, absolutely. You know what's going to happen it's in all, all cases is that there will be legal professionals who will defend these people to the uh, ends uh, of the absolutely. earth. Absolutely, yeah. And at the end of the day, then it's quite possibly a jury then that will decide on what they listen to and what they hear, whether someone is guilty or, or innocent. And that's the that's the, the system we have, and it's about the best system I think you can have. Like you know, oh. and uh, but uh, you know, people have the rights and. If they are charged and brought before the courts and there's trials, they can't. They will have the, the you know barristers that will defend them, and if they're protesting their innocence, they're going to have their viewpoint, you know, represented as to why. Yeah, so like it, it's a fair system, you know. Okay, Pat, uh, we we will leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ninety nine yeah. images up on the Garda website now. Pat Murray, former detective inspector, senior investigative officer, and author. Thank you very much for joining us.